comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to uh, quite a special video because every year Nigel and I are doing more or less an update video of what he has done to yeah. his Pinderwagen and this year we have a new equipment with Adrian that we mounted in the car to see how the car really sounds like from the interior with this fancy microphone that we have and a great camera and that was the idea behind it and then eventually it turned out in a different kind of video. It wasn't the sort of video I wanted to make at all. <laughs> no, me neither. So now, first of all, of course, probably you already know it by the thumbnail or by the title, it involves an accident. And some people might ask like, hold on a second, since when are you allowed to publish accidents? Well, we're not have, talking about accidents in public session in tourist driving, first of all. It was a private event, it was a track day. We asked the track day organizer, we asked the Never Cream for permission, and of course, you are the one who is involved in it. I'm not making video behind your back saying like, I'm oh, look, now you cannot drive for shit, me. Like, uh, so uh, it, it's all this, and it's also extremely minor considering I, everything. I'm, I'm cool with it. It's, it happens. People drive the Nürburgring. You see videos of cars going round and round on your channel. Yeah. There's no crash videos, and I understand why and agree with that. But people can get a false sense of the Nürburgring. It's not a dangerous place. No. It's a dangerous place. Yeah. We go fast. We go a lot faster than we do on the road. And things happen. I, I don't want this to happen. Yeah. Don't think that for any, any moment this is a good thing. I crashed on my 35th lap because I thought I knew where the Nürburgring went. <laughs> and I didn't. And I 35th wrote, lap? 35th. Like of the day? No, no, uh, ever. Uh, ever. Oh, ever. Oh, okay, so back in the days. Back in the day. We're not talking about this weekend. <laughs> two, no, no, 2006, uh, yeah. in April, I crashed the golf, um, bent all the chassis leg at the Flansgarten jump, yeah. had oversteer, crashed, wrote it off. Started building this one in the same time, and I've been driving nearly 3,000 laps since, yeah. and yesterday I, I had a minor off. Yeah, an extremely minor. And well, you said Nürburgring is a dangerous place because, yeah, of course, things can, things can go wrong like everywhere. Yep. But when they go wrong, it's actually a lot safer to have them happen there than on a public road, for example. It could be a public service announcement because today is a Car Friday. Absolutely. Car Friday and a lot of people are trying to show off and burnouts and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, it's not a place to do. It's not. I, I've said this, I think, a few times on video. I have a full, ha a full roll cage, seats with wings on, which we can run on track days. You can't do on TF. Hands device, helmet. If you watch the video again, maybe pause just at the right moment, you see my head come into frame for one frame and it's gone. And the hands device did its job. It yeah. stopped me having a larger injury from an impact at nearly 100 miles an hour. Yeah, if exactly. It's on the public roads. I wouldn't be wearing that equipment yeah. and it would have been a lot worse. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to crash, crash on the track, Dave. <laughs> I suppose you could really take it there if you wanted to, but We've don't crash it. on a track day, don't crash it all. Yes, exactly. That, that's the message from me. Exactly. But, okay, let's now go more, maybe a bit more into technical bits. Before we actually talk about the damage, let's talk about uh, the mods to your car. Most important thing is the sequential gearbox this year. That's what right. we wanted to so see. So, the video you will see, you'll go, he's fitted a sequential gearbox. I haven't. It's a dog box. It's a H pattern dog box with a sequential shifter. Uh -huh. It's a really cool piece of engineering by SQS and it converts your normal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 into pulling to go up a gear, pushing to go down. The shifter itself does all the work. I have a strain gauge on the gear knob which speaks to the ECU which means I can do flat up shifts. Oh wow. Which means I keep my foot on the throttle, pull the gear, let go and I'm in the next gear, lose no boost and no, almost no acceleration. It's wow. phenomenal. It's amazing. It has a nice click sound to it, it at least. It's a proper piece of mechanical engineering yeah. and wow. the engineering me appreciates yeah. that. And you put a lot more boost on it this year. I put a lot more boost, the same boost by gear as always, but the high boost now, I uh, run in a hybrid G, uh, G25 660 lit core turbo and that's about 560, 570 horsepower <laughs> in six gear on the button. And that's something that we wanted to capture, but something it is. else. Yeah. And now some people might say like, so, all the extra boost made you crash then, or... <laughs> oh, the, the YouTube forensic team, you're going to have a field day with this video, I'm sure, <laughs> tell me what I should have done. I, what do you think ha has happened? I think, I've watched the video quite a few times since, since this happened, I think the rear right tyre was too cold, there was a long closure uh, for an incident earlier in the day, mm -hmm. I went out and did one lap to get the tyres warm, came in and checked the tyre pressures, they were all good, I had to drop the front slightly. Went out again. If you watch any more of the video, if Misha put some clips earlier in, you'll see the car is quite stable. There's no moments. 
And I think as I turned into the top of the foxhole, the rear right was just a little bit too cold. The speed through the compression was the same as nearly every other lap I do, 140 miles an hour. Brake at the same, turn at the same point. I've overlaid GPS tracers. It's no faster. I wasn't trying to go faster for the camera. <laughs> no. Okay? I want to get that, that out there. <laughs> I don't want a video of me missing apexes, out breaking myself yes. by driving too hard. I've done enough videos with Misha. Yes. I want to drive smoothly. I don't want you to watch the video and say, he can't drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm smooth. That's one of the things I'm quite proud about. And I'm consistent. And that's why I don't understand why I crashed. Yeah, yeah. N neither, uh, neither do we. Things like yeah. that can just happen out of nowhere. It, it can. You yeah. have to be so alert. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. You know, I've done nearly 3,000 laps. I'm comfortable in the car. The car moves around. Yeah. That's no issue. And yet, that, that split second is gone. Yeah. And yeah. this was at over 100 miles an hour, and I yeah. had to get quarter of a turn of left lock yeah. at the top of the uh, yeah, foxhole. Going over the going, up, going towards the curb. And you have to be ready all the time. Yeah. You can't switch off. Yeah. And I think some people just get lulled into a false sense of security here. Yeah. They think, oh, it's an urban. I've done lots of laps. I know what's happening. Yeah. You don't know what's around the next corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, luckily, the damage is quite minor, so maybe we can briefly talk about that, because you actually went out on the same day. You fixed I the did. car. I did. I was recovered. I went to see the track day organizer, explained I was fine. The car was not leaking fluids. I had a power steering cooler with a split hose that I just bypassed. And I said, I can fix it, and I'd like to go and do a lap, just from a psychological point of view. Yeah. But I don't want to get it in that state. And then you say, you can't lap. He said, if the car is safe, you can do a lap. Mm -hmm. So. That's what I did. We yeah. came back here, took the bumper off, took the splitter off. Well, the splitter had come off by itself. <laughs> it needs it. Um, took the grill off. This corner, the inner wing here, you can see that was all folded in over to the headlight and it cracked the headlight. So this, I straightened it out with a big hammer, um, broke this piece of the wing and, and bent all this corner of the bumper. Good old cable ties, S secured yes. the bumper down. <laughs> Um, my daughter's quite proud of her cable tie stitching to put the rear arch back together I was together about to again. say, that was definitely not done by a man. It was not done by a man. No. It's all nice <laughs> and even and neat. Um, it's just missing some colour. So it it needs like, alternate yeah, colours, yeah, I think yeah. so as well. <laughs> like pink and like some lime green. That would, that, yeah, that. so it, it did that. It tore one of the supports off. It just yeah. pulled the thread out of the bottom. I have the support, but I didn't need to fix it because it's still solid enough. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. Cool. As usual. Oh, wow. I can stand on it, but you can see it sags a little bit. Yeah. Compared to usual. I'll do yeah. that again. Tiny. So that's what the strings are for. It's just to stop that sag at high speed. Wow. But this is buffalo board and you can see the impact. It, it's wow. pretty strong really. It's cool. It's better than a carbon fibre piece because that's... Well, 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 that's does cost you? Like 100 euros? 100 uh, pounds? About I mean, yeah, 60 pounds or yeah. 80 euros, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And it survived quite a large impact. Yeah. Um, I think what helped was it was a sidewards and backwards impact. The yes. car was coming backwards and brushed along the barrier. Yeah. Um, and that's it. That's, that's all it's done. Um, so that pushed across in here. If I open the bonnet, I can show that it moved the slam panel slightly. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look. It got a bit up centre, so closing it, it will be it's a Closing it's a little bit difficult, but... So, as you can see, the engine's... I'm quite proud of how the engine bay is looking now. I've spent a lot of time over the winter. I just love how every year the turbo gets bigger. I, <laughs> <laughs> but we had this hard pipe was silicone hoses with joiners and everybody complained about. I agree. I no. think people think that I liked it looking unfinished. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I wanted to, to be able to open the bonnet and not be embarrassed about it. Yeah. Um, so that's the new gearbox. It's an VW O2Q H pattern gearbox, which you can see there, with an SQS dog setting. I had to chop out most of the chassis leg to fit this, this gearbox mount. And the impact pushed this corner in, put a kink in here, you can just see where there's still a kink. It's cracked the radiator mount there, cracked the radiator mount here, so it pushed the entire slam panel across. The chassis legs haven't moved a millimetre. You measure them already? I, I can tell by the paint marks. So all the paint marks here, there's no cracking on any of the paint all the way down to the bulkhead on both sides. Uh -huh. um, the inner wing here, this is pushed across. That should be out there about another 10 mil, but it's purely this inner skin from the chassis leg, uh, some from the top mount, sorry, down to the front um, cross member. So I can push that. It's only the inner skin. The actual main chassis leg of the car hasn't moved at all. Yeah. 
So, 60. Big boy. Big boy. Very good. Went out. Went out for the lap <laughs> yesterday afternoon. The steering, absolutely straight. It doesn't pull to the left or right. There was no damage. I was underneath. I checked all the track rods and everything. Nothing's moved. Yeah. It's purely cosmetic, which That's is amazing. Amazing. It's big. absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, I realised that I know how big that could have been. Yes. I've seen videos like we all have yes. of accidents at the top and they bounce and they spin. And they flip. And they flip. They flip. Yes. Yeah. So that's you were extremely lucky. And I was. That's how I'm happy. I'm happy that we can have this conversation here. Uh, so am I. Yeah. So am I. So you're back for DN next. I'm back for DN in three weeks. Yeah. The new bumper, new grill, chop I'll just chop ten mil off the front of the splitter and you won't know. Awesome. Um and the car should not look like it. So you're going to have even control. less drag then on the front splitter. Less nice downforce as well. Ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the reason why. Was. I think, I think <laughs> so. Too much downforce yeah, yeah, at the front, yeah. not enough at the rear. Exactly. You need a bigger wing on the rear for sure. I, which I did say that last year. That is one of the plans I have for this year, is to yeah. fit a larger rear wing. Yeah. The, that focus changed to the gearbox because yeah. If you saw the video from last year, where I lost fifth gear yeah. and had to go from fourth to sixth, it's really we're still, frustrating. Yeah, but it was still very fast. <laughs> it was, but the gearbox was the weak link. Yeah. And the development of anybody who has a track car will know it's finding the weak link, yeah. make it, removing it or making it better, and moving on to the next thing. And the gearbox, this trip, I've done two days at Spa, yeah. two days at the ring, the gearbox hasn't missed a beat. It's Amazing. fantastic. And now you found another weak link is the rear downforce, so we can have another excuse and the reason. And the driver, obviously. Nah, nah. <laughs> obviously. But, yeah, if you weren't admitting your uh, issues or problems or mistakes or be to talking this open about it, I think then maybe there would be an issue. In this case, we can all appreciate Nike even more for his openness and being an amazing car guy. And uh, is this also another mod on the back of your car, by the way, because I haven't seen it last year, like this. Why, why is it there? I wasn't so, there last year. Why I was retired it? last week. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? I, that's it. I fit, worked at the same company for 37 years, or almost 37 years, yeah. and I retired last week. So wow. That's it. My new hobby, my wife and myself, yeah. I don't want to put her in a bad light. We have a list of jobs to do around the house. Yeah. She said, after this trip, we have no work. We can do some jobs on the house. I said, yeah, no problem. Yesterday, before we work on the house, <laughs> I just need to do a little bit more on the golf. She went, Really? <laughs> and if you're married or you have a girlfriend, you know that look. I don't need to tell you, you know that look. <laughs> nice, thank you so much for this amazing story. Richard, thank you very much. And, uh, see you at the end in three I'll weeks. See you at the end in three weeks. And we'll repeat for a full lap. Maybe even with a fancier lens this time, Adrian. Who knows? <laughs> see you then. Enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Cool.